أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أنا من دكتور سجاد لكتور فيزيولوجي ديبارتمنت. today we will discuss about blood bank. so uh, what is blood bank and what are the functions of blood bank? the blood bank is a place where blood is collected from donor, type separated into components stored and prepared for transfusion. To recipients and a blood bank uh, is a separate uh, freestanding facility or part of larger laboratory in a hospital basically it's a center where blood is gathered uh, as a result of blood donation and is stored as preserved uh, for later use in blood transfusion the term blood bank uh, typically uh, means to a division of a hospital where the storage of blood products occur and proper testing is performed. So uh, we will discuss here in details the procedures uh, and uh, the policies for uh, criteria in selecting the donors and how we will counsel the blood donors and what are the various bloods and blood products in a blood bank and what are the steps uh, for checking and documentation of blood and blood donor uh, how we will issue the products uh, from a blood bank to a ward uh, or to a unit uh, in a hospital and what are the safety guidelines and procedure for collecting and storing of blood and blood products within a, within a blood bank or uh, in a hospital and what are the roles and responsibility of healthcare workers uh, who are serving in blood bank let's discuss about the policies and procedures uh, of criteria in selecting blood donor so the person must fulfill the criteria to be accepted as a blood donor there are many points which we will discuss later in the next slide and, and the criteria are set to ensure uh, the safety of the blood donor as well as the quality of the blood which is donated so what are the uh, criteria for selection of a blood donor uh, the person age must be about 18 years and uh, below 60 years and if previously the person donated blood uh, there should be gap of uh, 120 days or 4 months uh, since the date of previous donation the HP level should be uh, more than 12 gram per deciliter and the person must be uh, free from any kind of serious disease condition or pregnancy and the person should have a valid id, ID card or uh, any other document to prove his identity such as passport uh, and the person must be free from risk behavior uh, such as uh, he should not be uh, homosexual uh, sex workers and their clients uh, he should not be drug addicted uh, he should not be engaged uh, in sex with any of the above and uh, having uh, he should not have more than one sexual partner so we have to do counseling of the blood donor the aim of counseling should be to encourage the HIV testing and to ensure the voluntary blood donation uh, the blood donor should not be forced for blood donation but he should voluntarily uh, donate his blood and to reduce the wastage and to develop safe donor pool blood donor counseling is a confidential dialogue between blood donor and trained counselor about issues related to a donor's health and the donation process it may be provided uh, before during and after blood donation so 
<coughs> before donating uh, we have to explain the blood donor about the donation process the value of honest responses and the benefit of uh, donation of blood in post donation counseling uh, we have to notify the donors in confidential matter of test results uh, of any medically significant finding uh, which is uh, identified during the pre donation evaluation so in pre donation counseling we have to verify the identification of the donor and ensure that uh, we have correct medical history form and match the donor information part of the medical history form with the donor and assure the donor that his or her information will be kept confidential and discuss with the donor the risk behavior for HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases explain to the donor the, uh, the consequences of not being honest when answering any questions and encourage the feedback and questions from the blood donor uh, you have to explain the donor uh, that how much uh, blood to be withdrawn and the test carried out uh, the donated blood and inform him or her that he shall be uh, he or she will be uh, notified uh, of the result if there is any uh, disease or abnormalities in the test make sure that the donor understand the information that uh, you have shared inform the donor about the importance of self exclusion from the donation process if he she believes in uh, his or her blood is not suitable for transfusion discourage the blood trans uh, blood donation in order to obtain the test results review the questionnaire with the donor and ask further question if uh, where the response are not clear ask the donor if they have had all their question adequately answered or not explain to the donor the need for obtaining consent uh, for the blood donation and explain to the donor the medical examination to be performed and then later uh, thank the donor uh, for taking the time to donate the blood then we have to do counseling of the donors who are deferred from uh, donating blood at the time so we have to explain the donor the reason for deferral at and the length of the time for which the deferral is effective if the reason for deferral is such that the donor should seek further medical advice explain this to the donor address any question that the donor may have confirm that the donor has understood your explanation or not uh, if he is not understood then explain him again and again and if the deferral is temporary nature encourage the donor to return for donation when it uh, the period of uh, deferral is over and uh, if the deferral is permanent then ensure the donor uh, that they should never come again for donation and uh, then record the date and time of the counseling in the medical history form So <coughs> now let's discuss the uh, post donation counseling. Uh, we have to counsel the patient uh, after uh, blood donation. The counseling should be conducted in in, in an environment uh, which is conducive to uh, confidential, and there should be one to one discussion between the counselor and the donor. Uh, whether it is provided in a fixed location or mobile setting. The venue uh, for the donor counseling should provide adequate audio and visual privacy and confi confidentiality. In case the blood donor has any confirmed abnormalities or any disease in the results, then inform the donor about the results uh, in simple and clear words uh, and give the donor time to consider the information and ensure that the donor understand the results uh, 
and allow the donor to ask you questions uh, if he has an, any question in his mind and help the donor to cope with the emotions arising from the test results. Inform the donor of the following things uh, that uh, what can be the possible routes of infection and the distinction between uh, HIV and AIDS uh, if the donor is uh, reactive for HIV and the likely progress of the infection and then uh, safe sex practices and what are the what will be the treatment options and discuss possible disclosure of the results uh, that when and uh, how this may happen and to whom it happened and provide information on how to prevent for further uh, transmission of the infection and that the donor uh, and his, his or her uh, sex partner should never donate blood transfusion in the future. And discuss any uh, immediate concerns and assist the donor to suggest a person uh, among their close friend or family uh, who may be available and acceptable uh, to offer immediate support and describe follow-up services that are available in the health facilities and in the community with special attention uh, to available services for treatment care and support and provide information on the relevant prevention uh, health measures such as health uh, health healthy lifestyle and good nutrition encourage the patient and offer referral uh, for the testing and counseling of partners and children and arrange a specific time for uh, follow up uh, visits and or uh, for treatment care counseling uh, support and other services so uh, here are the various blood products in the blood bank uh, first of all we take blood from the donor and then we send it to the laboratory for the testing of various diseases such as hiv hepatitis b hepatitis c or syphilis and any other uh, many other diseases uh, and then we check for the compatibility uh, and then uh, we transfuse the blood to the patient so uh, here are the whole bloods uh, <coughs> the whole blood is collected in a CPDA anticoagulant uh, bag which contains 450 ml of uh, donor blood and 63 ml of anticoagulant such as CPD citrate phosphate dextrose and uh, HCT is uh, 35 to 45 uh, percent and uh, we store it uh, at uh, 2 to 6 degrees centigrade and the shelf life with uh, CPD is 21 days and uh, with CPDA is uh, 35 days so the original plasma have one third uh, of the RBCs and uh, saline solution which contains 89 uh, glucose and mannitol are additive solutions uh, it is stored at uh, 2 to 6 degrees centigrade and uh, <coughs> it can be stored up to 21 to 35 days uh, or up to 42 days if we add the above solutions and the volume is uh, 250 uh, ml per bag and hematocrit level is uh, 55 to 75 percent and it contains RBCs, WBC and small amount of plasma. So now come to the FAPs, uh, fresh frozen plasma. And the plasma removed from the RBCs and then uh, within 6 to 8 hours of collection it is freeze uh, below uh, minus 30 degrees centigrade and before transfusion it is necessary to uh, thaw at uh, 37 degrees centigrade and once it is thawed uh, 
we have to transfuse uh, it immediately because uh, there is rapid deterioration of clotting factor and the dose uh, is 10 to 12 ml uh, per kg and the shelf life uh, of FAPs is 12 months and uh, it can it is stored at uh, minus 30 degree centigrade okay now let's discuss the PRP which is platelet rich plasma and uh, how we get the PRP <laughs> it is the gentle centrifugation of uh, whole blood which is then transferred to the second bag and what are the concentration of platelets uh, it is prepared uh, from PRP by second centrifuge centrifugation and removal of all but uh, only uh, 50 ml of plasma uh, is left and uh, it contains more than uh, 5 to 7 lakh of platelets and 60 to 80 percent of the platelets is present in the whole blood unit and it is stored at uh, uh, 2240 uh, sorry 2224 degree centigrade and uh, the shelf life of PRP is uh, 5 days now come to cryoprecipitate uh, it is also uh, a part of uh, blood transfusion and the volume of the bag is 15 ml and we usually transfer 4 to 6 uh, bags and it is stored at uh, minus 25 degree centigrade and the shelf life of uh, cryoprecipitate is uh, up to one year and the other products uh, are immunoglobulin, albumin and coagulation factor concern thank you so much I hope you guys understand a little, uh, little bit about uh, blood bank uh, this is just for uh, helping you guys and for the guidance of uh, blood bank uh, and we will visit the blood bank once you uh, come to the college uh, we will repeat it and uh, we'll discuss in detail inshallah uh, thank you so much Allah Hafiz